Hi everyone. So you may or may not have watched part one of this reading. Um, as I was saying in part one, I have not done a big long collective reading in a while. Um, I've noticed that people prefer the shorter ones anyway, but I like to, you know, have a variety and it has been a little while. So I wanted to do a big long collective reading for the new year. Didn't get a chance to do it just yet because there's been so much going on. I had stuff going on with family for the holidays and there's been a lot in the energy this week, right? Between the full moon, New Year's, Mercury retrograde. Um, you know, some of you have been purging a lot. I purged a little bit, but not a lot, but mainly I've just been really tired and I know I'm getting a lot of ascension upgrades. Spirit has also been guiding me to do a lot of collective healing work. Um, so even last night, like if you guys have been following my videos on the collective healings that Magdalena and I have been doing, for the Twin Flame Collective, even last night I was guided to do more in the shower and she had mentioned to me as well that she was being shown that more needed to be done. So I'll have another update for you soon. <laughs> um, it's been like a layered process that Spirit has been bringing us through. But anyway, so I'm going to do the card reading now for the collective reading for the new year. In the part one of the video, I used my pendulum. I wanted to show you guys, you know, how I work with my pendulum also. And I did not think it would take so long. I thought I was just gonna like get like a theme for 2023 that was maybe like one or two words. And um, I just realized I didn't write that down. Um, and then I ended up getting a whole long message. So I connected with Jesus like always. And he did explain at the end that it was not him alone. It was Jesus, Mother Mary and Mary Magdalene who provided a, um, a paragraph <laughs> for everybody. It was slow, it took a little while because I wanted you guys to see it authentically. I didn't want to do my shorthand and then you're like, how did she get that, <laughs> you know? Because now that I've been communicating with Spirit for a while, I have a shorthand with them. So I'm able to get the words quicker and move faster so it doesn't take me as long to do this. Um, I was saying like, if you ever get a Spirit chat from me or, or a spiritual health checkup, this is what I'm doing and this is why it takes time because it's very draining on my energy and it takes time to get these complete spelled out sentences. Um, but so I did do the slower version, although I didn't use my shorthand sometimes. Um, it works like between the pendulum and my clear audience and every, it all kind of works together. So just in case you didn't see that video, I want to tell you what they told us and then I'm going to get into the card reading. So the message that Jesus, Mother Mary, and Mary Magdalene had for the Twin Flame Collective for 2023 is, expect many faithful followers of the light to dance with their dreams. Kill expectations of what you think should happen and when. And you can be unexpectedly surprised by how quickly everything falls into place. Don't give up, believe in your divine Twin Flame and trust that they will find their way home to you. Open your heart to receive all the blessings that are coming to you. All very good pieces of advice and frequent advice that I find that Spirit gives through me, but that makes sense since I always connect with Jesus. Um, I also asked for a word for the year, a word to represent the year, and the word was expansion. And that meant expansion in all ways expansion in every aspect of your life. I expect the year to end differently from how it has started. Um, I also thought that that first sentence was just like the perfect example of how spirit will, will use this to validate that it's spirit and like it's not me because I wouldn't have said expect many faithful followers of the light to dance with their dreams. Like that's not a sentence that would, has ever come out of my mouth. <laughs> but it is a beautiful sentiment. So anyway, that is the message direct from Jesus, Mother Mary, Mary Magdalene. And now I'm gonna to switch to the camera around and go through the card reading for you guys for what to expect for the new year. Okay, now continuing part two, the card part of the reading. Part one was the pendulum part of the reading, which was what to expect for 2023. For twin flames um if you didn't see part one i did show you guys the spread again it's a tree <laughs> an oddly shaped tree but it's a tree it started off this way and then i just kept adding layers 
Um, so it's a tree of what to expect for 2023, divine feminine energy and what divine feminine needs to work on, divine masculine energy and what divine masculine needs to work on. This is, um, so since it's a tree, this is the grass and this is what is nurturing the growth of the tree because clearly the tree is talking about growth. This is for your life purpose <clears throat> journey and, or sorry, soul path. And this is for your like awakening and spiritual gifts and spiritual side. This, we're just gonna pretend like these are little bushes <laughs> looking at like themes and highlights for the divine masculine for this year, themes and highlights for the divine feminine this year. This is a shooting star with um, guidance from spirit. And this is the sun with my new crystal ball on top <laughs> with um, like, this is like advice for spirit and this is like how spirit is helping you or you know, any other guidance from spirit. Okay, so now I'm going to jump in. Hopefully you guys have seen, the, you know, the other video and because I explained this a little bit better there, but I've taken up some time already and I want to jump in. Okay. Ooh, I just kicked the bag. Okay, so I'm going to go in order of how I did this originally. Um, first, I started with the tarot, asking about what, you know, 2023 is gonna be like for, for the Twin Flames Collective. Now, I did point out in the first video that I do feel that this reading is focused towards primarily the middle waves from third through fifth, maybe a little bit into sixth wave, and maybe a little bit into second wave, um, first or second wave, you can resonate with this, but um, this is largely about growth and working through the different layers of growth needed and required in the twin flame journey process. First and second wave, you should be closer to union, but some second wave in particular, honestly, I really shouldn't even clarify that because it may be even some first wave, but um, I only say that because we know from the percentages that Jesus has given us that the majority are even already in union, at least for first wave. Second wave has a big jump to go, so you could be pushing through some big growth periods here. But first wave in particular, um, I want to say 98% are in union. So, you know, there's only, or 99%? Oh, I can't remember now. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if, if you're not yet then maybe some of this applies to you also. But the highlight here is growth. So it depends on each where each of you are at on your individual journeys. Take everything as it resonates. I'm saying it feels to me like it's geared towards the middle waves because I know that first and second wave should be clo closer to union or in union. So just take what resonates. Okay. So two of angels and two of trees starting off although you know don't take this necessarily linearly in terms of how the year will go because the twin flame journey is always comprised of ups and downs if there's always forward steps and backward steps so there are going to be times when this is what's what's going on and honestly i have seen this the like the meanings of these cards and how they're playing out in people's lives even in twins who are just about to come into union because there it's always it's a constant spiral of growth and constant cycling of growth that everybody is going through so you can have progress and then you can have it might not even be backward steps but it might just be that there's something internally to work through so it's going through this process again okay so with the two of angels we're talking about there's um, a decision that needs to be made and there's overthinking going on that is causing like a paralysis or a invisible barrier that um, one or both of you needs to push past. But this overthinking is, is stopping you right now. Um, so Spirit is saying that you guys need to find your clarity. You need to take a step back. You need to um, trust trust spirit to go to guide you guys to go through the flow of everything um, just like put yourself in the flow of the universe but, and allow everything to be revealed to you allow yourselves to find that clarity that you need 
that is going to help you uh, release your fears and and let that invisible barrier go away so that you can push forward and make that decision whatever it may be that could that decision could have to do with with karmic cycles or karmic situations or it could do with work and life purpose it could do it could have to do with when to come together with your twin but whatever it may be you just want to focus on breaking free from the cycle of overthinking because that is what is causing this inaction okay and then with the two of trees it's very very similar um very similar problem um a big part of the issue with two of trees is that is time management and learning how to prioritize everything in the best way for everyone and everything involved trying too hard oh, again overthinking about a situation like in trying to find solutions again spirit is saying let things be try and go with the flow allow spirit to reveal the right path and just focus on taking good care of yourself focus on finding your balance and focus on your time management and your prioritization of everything okay then we have the knight of stars and the emperor which to, to me this is like the divine masculine in two different stages here the knight of stars is like as he is growing and learning and then stepping into that emperor energy and power because the emperor is like the king and the knight is like the prince um so with the Knight of Stars, the, the Divine Masculine is gaining momentum to start pursuing his dreams, to start pursuing his goals. Um, there may be events that are taking place that are going to help push him in that direction. Um, Spirit is guiding them to connect their free will with their soul will and their, and their heart center. So that they're moving in the right direction for their soul path and for for their dreams and their goals okay just a sec just set the wine glasses aside and we'll put them away after okay um but put them like on the stove or something somewhere safe Okay, so Spirit is also talking about here that that's basically Spirit is going to be inspiring the Divine Masculines. And you know what? This can apply to the Divine Feminines too, even though it's uh, even though it's a male pictured there. The Spirit is going to be inspiring each of you to to follow your dreams, to follow your goals, to make big changes in your life where you're guided to, um, and and doing things according to your soul path and your soul passions that are going to make you feel more alive, happier, more centered and balanced. And when you step into that flow, that is when your dreams are going to start manifesting with the emperor. You just need to make sure that you are staying um, on top of things in terms of, in terms of being organized. Um, what's the right word here that I want to use? like having all your ducks in a row, so to speak, so that it's not just fly by the seat of your pants, but there's some structure going along with it so that you can put your dreams into reality. Because if there's no structure, nor, no organization at all, you're just relying on luck. And you want to rely on a combination of luck and um, planning and good planning. So that's what Spirit is saying here, that in getting into that emperor king energy you will also be or the divine masculine will also be getting himself organized so that he is ready to move forward on those dreams and move forward um towards the divine feminine in all of the right ways and that can also be in moving forward away from karmic partners and karmic situations okay so this also, this in this deck in particular, because of how it says father there, I often also feel there's a representation here of the healing of father wounds and parent wounds, okay? 
Okay, so now, honestly, Spirit is jumping right into, you know, what comes next being, look, Ace of Stars, Ace of Trees. This is the Divine Masculines coming forward, seizing opportunity, um, feeling that a burst of energy and strength to go, to go forward and make a new offer to the feminines to start fresh, to have a new beginning, to move forward in the connection. And then we have the wheel breakthrough and six of hearts, which six of hearts is about reunion. It's about reuniting with your twin flame and having positive breakthroughs and forward movement. So spirit is not dwelling here on the struggles. You know, there is the acknowledgement of that going back to the beginning that you are going to have struggles at times and there can even be struggles right before a breakthrough but this is all the process of guiding both of you forward in the pursuit and manifestation of your dreams and then bringing about bringing about these new realities these these are aces these are new chapters that are going to be starting for each of you and it's not just with each other it's in multiple ways you know divine feminines as well some of you are leaving karmic partners or karmic situations and in doing so you're starting a new chapter for yourself um you're bringing your soul path in a new positive direction for yourself and your growth and your expansion so you're going to have this these breakthroughs and positive movement in more ways than one, but ultimately also in reunion, reunion with your twin flame. Okay. And that of course is the ultimate goal. Now I would, I wish that I could say that all of you will have it this year. This is about what to expect in 2023, but I know that not everybody will have it this year. A lot of you will, but not everybody will, but know that everything that happens in the, over the course of this year is leading you in this direction. And you can trust that it will come to fruition in divine timing when it's meant to. Okay. So now, let's look at the... Oh, oh gee. Let's look at the divine feminine energy first. Uh, that's the way it ended up coming out from spirit. I actually asked about the divine masculine energy first, but spirit gave the divine feminine energy first. So let's do it go in that order. Okay, so divine feminines. Some of you are going to be, I'm going to do two at a time. So, you know, considering that this is a, a year of growth and expansion, um, some of you may find yourselves in mouse energy at the beginning of the year, or maybe because, like I said, forward and backward steps are to be expected. Maybe it's something that will ebb and flow, come and go over the course of the year. But what that means is there you might be feeling very detail-oriented, nitpicky, or even nervous. Um, focusing a lot on the details. You know, this could also go along with that overthinking. Um, you may be spending a lot of time fixing, preparing, organizing, scrutinizing. Like that is necessary to some degree, but you need to make sure that you're not going too far and not trying to be overly controlling, okay? Um, when you start to get go too far with the overthinking and the over controlling of everything, that's when you start to step into fear-based energy and you start to limit your vision of everything by trying to control too much. So that is when it can start to get painful and it can start to cause backward steps for you, okay? So that's when you need to step back and take the time to work on something mean meaningful or soul-fulfilling that's going to help you shift back into the higher perspective. In the lamb energy, the lamb energy represents Peaceful, prophetic, and patient. <laughs> once again, we have the word patience. Well, I say once again because it comes up frequently in readings. The lamb is the bearer of an important message, it says here. Um, in order to hear it, you have to quiet the mind. This is the honest guidance coming from an old friend, coming from a child, coming from a stranger, or coming from spirit. Well, it's spirit speaking through them. The wisdom resonates within you, and it will repeat itself over and over again until you listen. So right now, 
it's important for you to step back. And, and what Spirit is saying here is that there is an important message coming to you. And Spirit is wanting you to slow down and listen, okay? Um, so allow yourself to be quiet, still, patient, reverent, and be able to listen and receive that which is meant to come to you. And work on connecting with Spirit, okay? Um, I actually want to take here now the moth. And the moth, I felt, uh, was applying to both the Divine Feminine and the Divine Masculine. Um, and the moth is talking about not being too impulsive, not being too hasty. Don't think that the grass is greener somewhere else. Yes, you're going through a difficult journey, but this is the journey that you are meant to go on. This is your soul journey. You're... There is no perfect person. There is no perfect relationship. There's no perfect situation. And you have to remind yourself of that, so that if the, the grass isn't greener somewhere else. Don't be um, focused on easy solutions or, or what's shiny and new, okay? Don't, um, don't leave things unfinished. And don't burn yourself out either. Life is complex. No matter the illusion, no one is exempt from the trials and tribulations of, of this great journey, as it says here. So you need to work on seeing life as an infinite mystery rather than wishing it was easier or different. Life is not meant to be easier or different because Earth is a teaching planet and we are here to go through the lessons that our souls sign up for in every lifetime. And that can be difficult for us to accept from a 3d consciousness level but that is the reality um when you see people having an easy life they are either you know let me just pause here and say twin flames are at the the, the end of their ascension cycles they're ready to graduate so they're going through their toughest lessons if you're seeing someone who has an easy life they are not there yet they're still going through oh hold on can you not do that they are going through um, an easier lifetime because they're not getting into the hard soul lessons yet. Or they, they get a breather in between heavy lifetimes. So just know that your soul has a purpose for this lifetime for you. And you just need to go, through the, go with the flow of it, okay? Um, then we have the crow and the whale so by the way so far we have had two earth energies and air and one air energy now the crow is another air energy and the whale is a water energy of course am i looking for the crow okay so divine feminine is this is perfect for you oh my god hold on oh I just kicked the chair right on a, a toe that I've dug it and grown out of last night. Oh, that hurt. Okay, put my feet up. <laughs> Try not to do that again. <laughs> okay, the crow is perfect for you, Divine Feminines, because Divine Feminines lead the connection. And Divine Feminines are the spiritual centers and the awakening centers of the connection. And the crow represents being spiritually strong and creative and, you know, the... Life, our life purpose paths are also an important part of this journey too. So um, you are being drawn to, drawn to your psychic abilities, your spiritual gifts, the supernatural, seeing the unseen and knowing the unknown, <laughs> um, being able to, to understand and discover the past, present, and future through those psychic abilities. Make sure that your mind is clear when you're tapping into spirit. And make sure you are balancing your lives with a healthy diet, joyful friends, and regular self-study. The whale. A desire to dive deeper, profound peace, and ancient wisdom. The whale represents profound emotional health and stability. Whale personalities are not afraid of emotional expression or traversing difficult terrain as they have overcome many challenges in their lives. 
These experiences have enriched them, given them stability, strength, and a depth that is rare. Whale energy is usually linked to the feminine forces of compassion and communication. We can depend on whale personalities when all else seems lost and trust them to be a beacon in our darkest hours. I love that last sentence because I say many, many times that divine feminines are the beacon for divine masculines to find their way um, through this journey and home to their true authentic selves and home to you. And so uh, what, the way I see these animal spirit cards is this is the evolution for the divine feminines over the course of the year. There, like I said, there may be forward steps and backward steps, but this is the evolution that you can see going from this impulsive and hasty and um, over overly controlling, overly nitpicking, nervous worrying, um, learning to tune into spirit, learning to be patient and understanding, connecting psychically, and then coming into this, coming into that, reconnecting with your higher selves, um, lifetimes of knowledge and wisdom and being able to find that emotional stability and wisdom that comes along with all of that so that you can stand strong stable and um, compassionate as a beacon for your masculine and you know com communication will flow when it is meant to as well okay so now we're going to switch over to the masculines First, we have fish and hyena, which are water and fire energy. So these masculine fish are restless. They are unfocused. <laughs> they are trying to go with the flow of, of life's current, that is. Um, and they're, they're trying to put a lot of action into their lives, but... They can be like, they can be distracted easily. They can, um, they can be distracted in detours, whether that is karmic relationships or work or other stuff. And then that in turn can cause them to get overworked, um, even deceived at times by these people. Um, they can get lost because they're not clear on their goals and their intentions. And they just, they, they, they can get distracted. So spirit is trying to get them to find peace and calmness within, find their inner union so that they can focus on their goals and stay the course and not be roaming around getting lost in the current, so to speak. Okay. Where am I? Hyena, hyena, hyena. Kind of got lost in between the different... This book is separated by element. So the hyenas are masculines with amazing charismatic personalities that is a facade for unfulfilled dreams beneath the surface, which honestly, this is a lot of the ma divine masculines because... They get caught up in their karmic cycles and then they don't know how to get out. And then they have unfulfilled dreams and goals that they don't know how to fulfill because they've gotten stuck in these karmic situations. So this card is representing that these masculines have to um, step back from this facade that they are presenting to the world. Oh my gosh, excuse me. Step back from that facade and look within. Um, look at where they are using humor to hide resentments or to hide uncomfortable feelings and focus on um, prioritizing their goals and, and not worrying about what other people think, not worrying about how they come across, focusing on just what they need to do to take the next steps in their lives. Then we have a turtle and the buffalo. The turtle always cracks me up because divine masculines move at a turtle's pace, of course. <laughs> um, but the turtle actually has a really nice meaning despite the turtle pace, which I do believe that the turtle pace is represented here as well. But that being said, in that whole um, story about the turtle and the hare racing, the turtle wins because the hare is like, even though the hare could win, the hare is all over the place and kind of gets lost and sidetracked, just like those fish. 
but the turtle is slow and steady. And what's that phrase? Slow and steady wins the race. And that's something that you need to remember when you, when spirit's telling you to be patient with them, okay? Now, the meaning here about turtles is they are an ancient soul grounded at home in themselves and trusting. So um, the spirit is guiding the divine masculines to get to that place where they are connecting with their higher selves and feeling more at home with their selves, getting grounded and following their soul paths. They have, um, just so you know, there's a strong connection between both earth and water here. Um, and that both grounds them to the deeper truths of life as well as um, leads them forward down their soul paths. They are learning to focus on their life experiences and the lessons that come along with them. And they are then in turn using that as motivation for, for starting to write new chapters for themselves. And then lastly, we have the buffalo. Grounded yet heavenly, practical yet spiritual, which honestly, it makes complete sense that that's where, that's the ultimate goal for the masculines because the masculines hold down the lower chakra energy. So that hence the grounded, but we still want them to be connected to spirit. The hooves of the mighty buffalo are grounded in the earth, yet its heart and mind rise toward heaven. The buffalo sees challenge, hardship, or a bump in the road as an opportunity for upliftment. So these masculines are going through that complete um, mental and spiritual growth to, to move away from um, pessimism and be able to see things from a higher perspective that helps them move forward in life more appropriately. The buffalo does not fear death, illness, or misfortune. Its gentle eyes look to the road ahead, trusting every turn. May we all experience this elusive yet life-changing bliss from time to time, and may we allow this card to remind us that life is a precious gift. So that this is actually a really great energy for the Divine Masculines to be headed towards, and I, I feel very um, happy for those of you whose Masculines have found that or are finding their ways there. It's like, that's great. This is exactly where they need to be to be grounded and centered and balanced emotionally and spiritually for moving forward in their lives in all the right ways. And now we do have one more animal spirit card, but I felt this was a message from spirit for both of you again. And it's the hawk, air energy, of course. Watchful, all-seeing, messenger of divinity. The sharp eyes of the hawk watch our every move. This keen-eyed bird has the ability to see every little detail as well as the bigger picture. When this card appears, fate has its eyes on you and the winds are shifting. It is said that the hawk carries news upon its wings and is sent from divinity itself to deliver it. The message should not be taken lightly. Though it may seem small or insignificant, it will eventually redirect your course. So I fully see this as um, both divine mas masculine and divine feminine spirit is with you, watching over you, guiding you, leading you forward, um, leading you down your fated destiny as a twin flame. And, um, and, and spirit will be bringing you messages and guidance all along the way. Make sure that you are paying attention so that you can hear it accurately. Okay. Okay. So now to finish up the energies for each of them we're going to go to the quantum quantum human design cards okay so what is it i'm going to move my ipad now that i moved a section of the cards out of the way what is it that the divine feminines are working on through for 2023 so first we have curiosity now, I am not a human design expert. I want to learn human design, but it's very complex, just like astrology. It's also very fascinating in understanding how we function as individuals. So um, this might inspire you to learn more about it, but this is just like a little preview. Like this, look, these images on these cards are what a human design map of ourselves can look like, kind of. This is only highlighting, this is only highlighting this specific gate, but there's a, like, if you get a human design, um, I'm not sure what the right word is, reading, we'll say, 
it's going to have like some of these things are going to be colored and some of them are not going to be and that's going to be telling you what centers for yourself are open which ones are closed which gates are open which ones are closed all that stuff and it's going to explain to you a lot of like how you function and why and the best things for you and why like a, a lot of detail a lot of amazing details on um understanding how you function and you know the best ways to help like to help you function at your best basically and it's also highly beneficial for relationships both in romantic relationships and parent child because it tells you the best ways to interact with each other and help each other or the best ways to parent that child for like what for just how they function and how best to motivate them and help them and stuff like that so human design is really fascinating and helpful um, in that respect but anyway going to curiosity okay so the challenge with this is to not let self-doubt and suspicion cause you to stop being curious if you are mastering curiosity you're mastering the ability to use questioning and curiosity as a way of stimulating dreams of new possibilities and potentials thoughts that inspire the question of what needs to happen to make an idea a reality if you are if you need to work on this then this is what will be going on for you you will have struggle with doubt especially self-doubt that leads to suspicion and the struggle for certainty, the unwillingness to question an old idea or the loss of curiosity. Ask yourself this, am I curious about life? Do I regularly allow myself to be curious about what else is possible in the world or in my life? Do I doubt myself and my ideas? What needs to happen for me to unlock my need to be right about an idea and to allow myself to dream of possibilities again? I do feel that this card came out because Life purpose is an important part of the Twin Flame journey also. I have seen this many times in readings for clients that spirit often highlights the need for focus on your life purpose path as well and not just your relationship with your Twin Flame because as you grow and follow your soul path, your Twin Flame journey will evolve as it's meant to as well. Okay, conclusion. The challenge with this card is to learn to bring things to completion to allow yourself to be led to where you need to be to finish things, to value your ability to know how to finish and to learn to give up your need to try to start everything, to finish things in order to create space for something new. If you are in mastery here, you have the ability to respond to being inserted into opportunities, experiences, and events that you have the wisdom to facilitate and complete, to know exactly what needs to be completed in order to create the space for something new. If you need to work on this, pressure, confusion, and self-judgment for not being able to get things started is how you feel. Avoiding or putting off things that need to be completed, creating a backlog of projects that can lead to paralysis and overwhelm. Finishing things prematurely due to pressure. So those are, would be how you're acting if this is something you need to work on. And Spirit is asking you, do I own and value my natural gift of knowing how to bring things to completion? What things in my life do I need to finish in order to make room for something new? Am I holding on to old circumstances and patterns because I'm afraid to let them go? Do I judge myself for not starting things? How can I learn to be gentler with myself? Okay, now we have restoration and allowing. Restoration. The challenge is to learn to value yourself enough to retreat from community and the energy of those you love, to restore, restock, and replenish your own inner resources, to learn to interpret the signal of loneliness correctly, to take responsibility for your own care and resources, and to not abdicate your own power to take care of yourself. If you're in mastery, you have the ability to retreat as a way of replenishing your inner and outer resources and to bring your renewed self back into community when you are ready so that you have more to give. If you need to work on this, you have difficulties with martyrdom, loneliness, and blaming that causes you to compromise what you need and try to prove your value by overdoing and overgiving. So, contemplations. What role does loneliness play in my life? Has loneliness caused me to doubt my value? What do I need to do to restore my energy? Am I doing enough to take care of myself? What agreements am I making in my relationships that might be causing me to compromise my value 
How can I rewrite these agreements? And lastly, am I abdicating my responsibility for my self-care? Am I living a martyr model? What needs to be healed, released, aligned, and brought to my awareness for me to take responsibility for cultivating my own sense of value and my self-worth? Okay. And then lastly, with allowing, the challenge is to love yourself enough to open to the flow of support, love, and abundance. To incrementally increase over the course of your life what you're willing to allow yourself to receive. To learn to know that you are valuable and lovable simply because you exist. If you are in mastery, you uh, can set intentions and move solidly towards the fulfillment of the authentic self with complete trust that you are supported in being the full expression of who you are and your life purpose, even if you don't know how or what the support will look like. Trust in source, living in a state of gratitude. If you need to work on this, you, have, you are experiencing stress, fear, and ultimately compromise on what you want and who you are because you don't trust that you are supported. To be valiantly self-sufficient to the point of burning yourself out and to never ask for help. So contemplations, do I ask for help when I need it? Why or why not? Do I trust the universe to support me in fulfilling my intentions? Am I grateful for what I have? Can I transform my worry into trust? And do I believe that I deserve to be supported? Okay, so that's what the divine feminines need to either work on or work through. Now, the masculines. First we have the leader. And then we have impact. So this is what the masculines are being guided to work on this year. For 2023, the leader. To learn to lead as a representative of the people you are leading. To cultivate a leadership agenda of service. To not let your fear of not being seen, heard, or accepted get in the way of healthy leadership. To learn to take your right place as a leader and not hide out. In mastery, they have the ability to be able to listen, learn, hear, and serve the people you lead and to assume and value your right leadership position as the voice for the people you are leading. If they are, need to work on this, they, are, they push and seize leadership for the sake of personal gain or to be afraid to lead and not feel worthy of serving as a leader. Spirit is asking them, how do I feel about being a leader? Am I comfortable leading? Do I shrink from taking leadership? What is my place of service and who do I serve? This is largely about masculines um, stepping into their power, finding success, um, and finding, su finding success in their life purpose paths as well. Okay, impact. The ability to master emotional energy and learn to trust that your impact is in service to the world. When you understand that your life is a vehicle for service and your energy is being used to influence and impact those around you, you assume greater obligation and responsibility to maintaining a high frequency of energy. The quality of the emotional energy you cultivate influences others to come together in an equitable, sustainable, and peaceful way. Learning to trust that your words and impact will have effect when the timing is correct and not overriding divine timing. In mastery, maintaining a high frequency of emotional energy that supports equitably, sorry, that supports equitability, sustainability, and peace. Use <coughs> Excuse me. Using your emotional alignments to influence others and to serve as an energetic beacon of peace. If they need to work on this, <clears throat> they feel desperate, emotionally reactive, lacking and invisible, and, be, and are willing to do whatever it takes to take resources and energy for their own good regardless of the means. Fear that they'll never be seen or heard. Spirit is asking them, what do I need to do to deepen my trust in divine timing? What do I need to do to prepare myself to be seen and to have influence? What do I need to do to sustain my emotional energy in order to align with peaceful and sustainable solutions? How do I feel about lack? How do I feel about abundance? How can I create a greater degree of emotional abundance in my life in my daily practice? Okay, and now lastly for the masculines, we have collaboration and spirits. Collaboration. To master the need to be in front and allow yourself to serve through building teams, collaborating, and influencing the figurehead of leadership. To be at peace with serving the leader through support and collaboration. 
to recognize that the voice of the leader is only as strong and powerful as the support he or she receives. In mastery, to embrace that power comes from supporting, influencing, and collaborating with leadership to recognize that you don't have to be the figurehead to influence the direction that leadership assumes. The chief of staff is often more powerful than the president. The energy to unify people around an idea that influences the direction of leadership. If this needs to be worked on, there's a struggle and fight to be seen and recognized as the leader at cost to your energy and the fulfillment of your purpose. Spirit is asking, what are my gifts and strengths? How do I use those gifts to influence and lead others? How do I feel about not being the figurehead of leadership? What happens when I only support the leadership? Do I still feel powerful, influential? Make a list of the times when my influence has positively directed leadership. And then lastly, spirits. The challenge is to trust the divine order in all of your life, in all of your life. To learn to connect with source as the path to creating well-being in your life. To remember that your life serves an irreplaceable role in the cosmic plan and to honor that role and to live from it. To trust spirit. In mastery, connecting with source with consistency and diligence so as to fulfill your divine purpose and fulfill the true story of who you are and the role you play in the cosmic plan. To use your alignment with source as a way of healing the world. If they need to work on this, they have fear and mistrust of spirit, using your life strictly for personal gains regardless of the impact on others, ego in the lowest expression, not feeling worthy of being loved by source, and using your willpower to create instead of alignment. Do I trust source? Do I have a regular practice that connects me to source? Do I know my life purpose? Am I living true to my purpose? And how can I deepen my connection to my purpose? Okay. So that is what the Divine Masculines are being guided to work on in 2023. Okay, so now I asked for the um, highlights and themes of the year for each. So for the Divine Feminines, we have... The Oracle of Delphi. I'll make this a little bit closer for me. The Oracle of Delphi and the Light of the World here first, which both of these are about connecting with spirit, connecting with your higher selves, and integrating your higher selves. The Oracle of Delphi is divine feminines this year. Expect to have your spiritual gifts really grow and expand, learning how to use them, learning how to not just connect with spirit, but like really be able to tap into your power and your priestess abilities and expand your spiritual um, growth, awareness, and, um, and, and spiritual gifts. The light of the world is saying that in doing so, you are connecting with your higher self more, you are tuning into your higher self, functioning from an intuitive level, functioning from your crown chakra and a higher vibration and leaving your ego center behind, trusting your intuitive voice and letting that lead you, okay? Um, I'm actually going to go in a different order here. Now, Divine Masculines, their, the highlights of their year here are, excuse me, sorry, burping, intricacies in industry and the lightning bolt. So intricacies in industry, they are working on building a solid foundation for their future for this next chapter that they are moving towards with toward that is meant to be with you their twin flame um put they're focused on literally like it's laying the foundation so they're focused on one brick at a time just like that guy is doing in the picture laying one brick at a time at building that solid foundation and opening up their world to many more opportunities um, of advancement for themselves and for this connection ultimately but for the divine masculine, because they're in their lower chakras more, they have to build that up in their material world first before they're ready to come forward towards their divine feminines, okay? So that is where they are focused, and the lightning bolt represents endings in karmic situations as well. So they are focused on building up their um, a solid foundation in their, in their real lives, in their material worlds, so that they can bring any karmic situations to an end and move forward into new chapters and new opportunities for themselves. <clears throat> and then I love that both of them, these are the last cards on both sides. The Divine Masculine, King of Roses. Divine Feminine, Queen of Roses. Like how perfect is that? I'm literally asking Spirit, what are the themes for the year? 
when I ask about the Divine Feminine, I get the Queen of Roses. When I ask about the Divine Masculine, I get the King of Roses. Like, how perfect and amazing is that? Thank you, Spirit. Both of them, both Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine, are being guided through their healing process, guided through their growth process, so that they can fully embody and embrace the Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine roles, and they're being prepared for union, to come together into union. I do want to say, just like I said in the beginning, not all Twin Flames are going to come into union this year yet, okay? We are getting there. Each year is another step in the right direction. Jesus has previously told me that all Twin Flames will be in union by the end of 2028. Um, and, and you saw, if you watched the pendulum reading, by the end of this year, 65% of Twin Flames will be in union. And that of that 65%, I do know, I do recall that that's the first wave and the second wave and some of the other waves. Um, but so know that this doesn't mean you're 100% gonna come into union this year, but it means that this is a direction spirit is guiding you in and you just have to work through the process one step at a time, okay? Okay, so now going to the Oracle of the Seven Energies, what are, again, what are the themes and the highlights of what the Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine are working through this year? Divine Feminines have, it is what it is, Call of the Muse and Spirit of Gratitude. This is a Crown Chakra card, Root Chakra and Throat Chakra. The is what it is card, this is about having radical acceptance for circumstances, being what they are, being what they need to be at each point in time, um, allowing everything to unfold how it needs to, releasing resistance and denial of all of that, you know, not trying to force, just accepting life on life's terms as it needs to unfold, and I'm taking everything at face value. Call of the Muse is about connecting with your higher selves, connecting with your soul truths and your soul passions, and um, pursuing your life purposes, uh, both as what it, there, everybody has two different life purposes, at least, and sometimes more. One is your creative life purpose, like what you're meant to, what, what makes you feel alive, what you're passionate about, what it can be, what brings you financial success. Um, and then there's also the spiritual divine life purpose path, which is about how you are meant to use your spiritual gifts, how you are meant to be a healer and help others. So you're gonna be guided to follow one or both of those and really like, because it's your throat chakra, it's really like using your voice to, no, not using your voice, using expression to embody your life purpose paths, not being afraid to follow down them, okay? Being in the flow with spirit, um, going with that flow without being self-conscious and, and just moving forward in that direction as you're meant to. And then lastly, the spirit of gratitude is, you know, when we can shift to a gratitude consciousness, that allows us to manifest uh, everything in our lives more easily because we are in flow with spirit and we are in gratitude of, of everything going on and around us. We are also understanding that everything going on around us is happening how it needs to for a reason. So um, that is one part of this. This is also understanding, it's that radical acceptance, understanding that everything is happening for a reason. So not getting upset with things and lo instead looking at situations as, okay, what am I meant to learn here? What is meant to come from this here? What is the purpose? And having gratitude for every experience that we have, knowing and understanding that it's all happening for a reason. Um, this is also connecting with spirit more. This is um, knowing that your prayers will be answered exactly as they are meant to be, okay? The Divine Masculines have body and soul, the time machine, both of those are root chakra cards, and they have feeling the world, which is a sacral chakra card. Which one is this? Okay, three. So the body and soul card is about, um, spirit is teaching them to take better care of themselves, literally body, mind, and soul, like emotional, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually in all capacities, learning how to take better care of themselves and also learning how to connect with their true authentic selves, connecting to their, their higher selves, their spirit, and embodying that. The time machine is spirit is guiding them through the process of releasing all of the 3D, ow, 
Boom, the hip just popped and that hurt. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Spirit is guiding them through the process of releasing all of the 3D condition, uh, conditioning, excuse me, 3D conditioning and inherited patterns that they have been living through their lives so far. But this is a spiritual journey and awakening that is having them connect with a higher purpose and a higher way of living and being. So it's releasing all of the illusions and the conditioning of the 3D world. And it is integrating the lessons that they are learning along the way, integrating the karmic lessons, and then leaving the past in the past, but not allowing it to track them anymore so that they can move forward how they are meant to in their lives and down their soul paths. And then feeling the world is them, their, their own sensitivities opening up. That can be emotional sensitivity. That can be spiritual sensitivity. And just as all of that is opening up for them, as their higher chakras are opening up for them, they um, are going to go through a process of connecting more with their with their spirit side, connecting more to clairsentience, um, having empathy and vulnerability open up for them. And you should expect that they're going to be overwhelmed at times. So that's one of the reasons why the Divine Masculines might get um, quiet at times because they're processing everything. They're processing all of this newfound awareness and understanding that is opening up to them. Um, they're seeing the bigger picture. They're understanding everything from the higher perspective. And it's a lot. It's overwhelming. So they're going to have periods of time where they have to process all of that. Okay. And I actually, I totally forgot. I have two other cards down here um, that were just out of place. So from the Akashic Records card, we have the Spring Autumn. And from the Oracle of the Seven Energies, we have the Roots of Abundance. And I did also feel these are applied, applicable to both Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine. So the Autumn card represents that spirit is actually both of these cards together they both mean the same thing spirit is guiding and leading both divine feminine and divine masculine to the ultimate culmination of everything um reaping all of the rewards for all of their hard work as establishing that solid foundation that stability um and anchoring the connection and and reaping the rewards for all your hard work um harvesting <laughs> the growth and abundance um everything blossoming and coming together like i'm just making different analogies here but it's just it represents the fruition of everything everything coming into a reality okay so that is the direction that spirit is guiding and leading everybody in you just have to expect that the timing of when each each of you is going to come into all of that like it's not you, everybody's not going to come into it all at the same time it's a process okay it's a process that you're guided to for the divine timing for you and your path okay so now we're going to move over to the cards representing the growth that um, what is nourishing the growth that the, everybody is going through this year okay so first we have from the hero's journey oracle which is about the um the soul growth and the soul journey process first we have make the grade with flying colors and me time make the grade with flying colors says here when you are tested confronted by an obstacle or challenged by someone ask yourself what's in it for me ask yourself what is right about the situation and how it might make you stronger Look for the gift in the challenge and for the opportunity to put what you have learned to the test. When you look for the lesson and the blessing in a situation, you will always find it. You have a unique curriculum, especially being on a twin flame journey, and you've co-created the aspects of your life that are testing you right now so you can grow to your fullest potential. You knew long ago that you would emerge through these trials brighter, better, and wiser. Remember, you have access to the teacher's manual or to like the true path your true soul path from a higher perspective um you you already know all of the answers deep within yourself so when you see yourself and everyone and everything your defenses soften and your heart opens and your learning curve is off the charts from an alchemical perspective you can transform your so-called enemies and challenges into divine opportunities for maximum awakening okay me time naturally a, an obvious clear big part of this is you need to um, spend time alone sometimes. You know, use the time that you have in solitude as important me time to work on yourself, to take good care of yourself in, as, in terms of self-care, self-love, 
to connect with spirit in meditation and to follow your soul path, your life purpose path. Know as well that you're never alone. You're never completely alone. Spirit is always with you. Listen to that inner voice of wisdom. Breathe a sigh of relief next time you have a little me time. What might at first seem sad or lonely can be a great blessing. Fill your quiet spaces with luxurious candlelit bubble baths, literally or symbolically. Soak in your meditative thoughts, desires, creativity, preferences, music, and your favorite candle aroma. Take a chance to explore who you are without interruption. And when that moment finds you, remember it's a chance you've been waiting for. Then we have Whale of a Time and a Splendid Torch. <clears throat> Whale of a Time, your charge is to enlarge. Most people think the belly of the whale stage is a dark night of the soul, but it doesn't have to be. The key to finding joy in your connection with the whale aspect is twofold. You have the ability to go with the flow and the potential to own your power. When you contemplate the nature of this loving ancient being we call whale, envision swimming with it and receiving its wisdom and love. You are reminded that you are sovereign, wild, and free. The whale is here to remind you that whenever you find yourself in a challenging circumstance, your charge is to enlarge. Your mandate is to become a heart space so large that all the world can fit within it, meaning all parts of you and all parts of humanity with nothing left out. In the belly of the whale, you're reminded to stop resisting and instead open and allow the, the, the oh my God, I can't talk, the diversity of life and the entire ocean of emotion of all sentient beings to be celebrated and loved. A splendid torch Reflect upon your journey and recognize that you are more yourself now than you've ever been, and there's more where that came from. After all, the end of one journey is the beginning of the next. But before you embark upon your next adventure, take a moment to acknowledge yourself for participating in this quest and for keeping your eternal flame of purpose burning bright. At this point, you don't have to wait for others to light your fire because the permission you need has already been granted. Know that true joy comes from being a splendid torch that lights the way for others. And then lastly, we have Be Reborn Daily. Let go of the past and breathe in your new incarnation. And One with the Sun, Be the Light. I love both of these just from the cards. <laughs> in every moment, you can begin anew. With this next breath, know that you are wiping the slate clean and releasing any baggage you've been carrying thus far because you no longer need it. Exhale the past completely. And as you inhale, open yourself to a whole new vista, a whole new incarnation, a whole new story of who you are and why you are here. You selected this card on this day, in this moment, to remind yourself that you are always at a crossroads. There is always a choice. The reset button is in your hand. What new story would you like to tell? Who will you be today? What if the entire world is conspiring for your greatest good? What might happen if you chose to see everything as a blessing? And then one with the sun. You are at one with the light of the universe. Every cell of your body, your temple, is a miniature sun. You are the sunlight of the spirit. There is nothing you have ever done or will do that can diminish your light. Even though clouds of self-doubt may temporarily obscure your awareness, Behind those clouds, your inner radiance still shines. Whether or not you realize it, you emit divine awareness. You are not moving toward the light on your hero's journey, beseeching it to have mercy on you. Your wake-up call is to realize that you can run, you can't hide from your true nature. This is not grandiose, it is a humble truth that also applies to your brothers and sisters on this planet. Be still, knowing the ground you stand on is holy and the spotlight of divine love, intelligence, beauty, and creativity is on you. Okay, so now we're going to shift over to your spiritual um, nourishment that you can expect this year. And that's through the Isis Oracle. First we have Temple of Black Obsidian and Stay True and Be in Your Power. Okay, Temple of Black Obsidian. The most challenging task is not to confront an external enemy, but to take courage in both hands and journey within. 
to meet our own dark self and begin the healing task of bringing love, acceptance, and light to our shadow parts. That is the sacred purpose of any enemy, within or without, to bring us more deeply into our own being as we seek to find and heal the darkness within. Well, ain't that the truth? Okay, stay true and be in your power. I love how it also says here, Osiris and Isis, Lord and Lady of Divine Authority. You are a sovereign divine being with spiritual authority and freedom within you. You do not need permission from anyone to be who you are and live your life as you choose. This is your divine birthright. Guard it as the precious treasure that it is and remember that you are a divine being. Stay true and be in your power. That is 100%. <laughs> Follow your path and it doesn't, doesn't matter what anyone else thinks or what anyone else says. Life restored, priestess of the phoenix, and spirit of Isis, triumph of the goddess. Life restored, where are you? Here we go. Spiritual resurrection is gifted to you now. Whatever part of you or your life you thought to be dead is being revived and will flourish back into life. Just as the phoenix rises from the fire, transitioning from death into life, so too will you rise again, healed and renewed. And you know, I, I've said this many times, the twin flame journey is a spiritual rebirth process. So that's exactly what this is representing to you here. So whatever stage you're at in the rebirth process, know that you will get through it and you will be rebirthed and you will be that phoenix rising from the ashes. Triumphantly, just like the spirit of Isis says, there are times to surrender and let go, but there are never times to give up. Persist with your bold faith and inspired action until the impossible happens. Isis has the spirit of triumph and will never fail in her quest, no matter how bold or impossible it seems. Believe. And to me, that is spirit saying to you, believe that you will come into union. Believe that you will get there and just keep pushing forward, um, persevering until you do. And then lastly, we have the knot of Isis. Energetic stabilization with the buckle of the beloved. And Divine Sunchild, Blessings of the Sun Falcon. Each person has their own unique spiritual blueprint with particular skills, talents, and higher destinies unfolding that use their unique attributes. Part of your spiritual blueprint is a special relationship to the energies of the goddess. This means that not only do you have the important spiritual task of helping her thrive in this world, but you are afforded her power, protection, and abundance too. You are now deepening your connection to her. I feel like that's saying that, that you are connected to Isis and she is helping you and you are helping her in this 3D world. And as you find your way through this spiritual awakening process that is the, a huge part of the twin flame journey before union. Divine Sun Child, blessings of the Sun Falcon. The Divine Sun Child Chorus, Son of Isis and Osiris, flows to you now. It is time to allow your life to flourish without limits, to let your light burn bright and without veil, just like the midsummer sun burning without contest in the Egyptian desert. Blessings of the Sun Falcon herald the time when your divine legacy is being born. It is your time to burn bright. Okay? I also feel that the, this Divine Sun Child card represents the crystalline children that will be coming to Twin Flames uh, after they come into Union. So that's another aspect to this. Okay, so both of those were about um, what is nourishing the growth and expansion for you to expect. Um, in this year of 2023. So now lastly, we have um, the guidance from Spirit. Uh, final messages on advice that Spirit has for you for this year and, um, and how Spirit is helping you and guiding and leading you through it. So first we have from the Cosmic Journey Oracle. Okay. The universe wants to co-conspire with you. Your effortless effort is fully required. Okay, let me read these two first. Whatever your biggest dream is, you've been handed it for a reason, 
and once you move forward, no matter how fast or slow, you will be met more than halfway. The universe is your co-conspirator waiting to partner up to make it happen. Our next level of conscious evolution is not competition, but synergy. Your role is to simply provide your greatest gifts for the greatest number of people and then join with others who want to provide their own gifts in cooperation with you. As you share your dream, a clarion call is sent out for others to join you as mentors, allies, and venture partners. It almost seems too easy, but it's not. These divine cosmic appointments are already scheduled for you. Ask yourself, what attributes would make the perfect partner for my greatest dream? How can I stay open to see the possibilities as they arrive? Then make a list of all the potential partners who have even more to gain by your dream succeeding than you do. Your effortless effort is fully required. This is about surrender, I can tell you that. There's a dance of action and surrendering, of doing and being, a sense of when to push and when to just allow. By putting your full heart and 100% effort into something, you actually win. Putting in the work, if it's from a true place of meaning, is itself your reward. It's only the attachment to results that creates disappointment, frustration, or depression. When you have ex expectations and they aren't meant, you're upset, right? And if you're waiting on outside praise or recognition, you're always beholden to it. By having no attachment, you are free. Your full effortless effort is also required because we're all in this together. What is called for now is a solution for everyone on the planet. When is the last time I have felt in a state of flow and effortless effort? For the next 24 hours, put your full effortless effort into one project and record what happens. Then we have, you will only see the way by making the way. How can this be a wonderful win, win, win? There are no more well-marked trails to travel anymore. All institutions, organizations, and establishments are in a state of creative destruction. The safe route or the right way to build your life, your resume, your business is over and done. If you've received this card, it's time now for you to walk the pathless path leading with love. What a time and space to be alive, taking part in nudging forward the next era of evolving human consciousness. You volunteer to be a torchbearer, leaving guideposts for others as you move ahead with joy as your GPS. You can see the way only by making the way. Ask yourself, what did I volunteer for down here in service of evolving myself and the world? And then get lost on purpose. Turn off your phone and simply allow yourself to wander in a new area freely. How can this be a wonderful win-win-win? There's a solution that can truly help you, your community, our planet, your venture, and everyone. Yet something holds you back. Do you even really need to be persuaded and influenced to do what's better for you in the world? Perhaps there is a deep-seated belief that you don't deserve. Do you worry that any acts that benefits you must be selfish and thus an evil scheme? Know that there is a path that leads to your win-win-win. Your evil scheme is one for global good. What's possible? Anything, if you can imagine it. Ask yourself, what is my idea for an evil scheme for global good? Research at least 10 examples of businesses or projects already making the world a better place. Then we have synchronicity is a love letter from the universe across time and space. Out of the mess comes elegant order. This card asks you to make magic by looking at everything anew from the understanding of the language of signs, symbols, and synchronicities. The question or issue at hand is not simply black or white. You're called now to look with new eyes, hear with new ears, and feel in new ways. A song might not just be a song. There's magic in the right lyric at the right time talking to you. There's an interconnected entanglement in our world that's not simply cause and effect, and you cannot make sense of it with your rational brain. Ask yourself, what past seeming coincidences can I look back on and make magic with a different perspective? Open up your favorite book and flip to page 25 for a message. Everything looks messy in the middle. If you knew that, you would be more allowing of the messes, of the messes that show up. The universe is always seeking order and novelty at the same time. The novelty creates new ideas, pathways, and variations. 
The order creates coherence and consistency. Realize that the chaos, confusion, and turmoil are exactly what's needed right now. Otherwise, you'd come to the exact same thought that thousands of others have had before you. Nobody thinks they want a mess, but what, but what if that is necessary to create something bigger and grander? Baking is full of broken eggs and spilled flour, but then the alchemical process turns our mess into a delicious cake. Don't sweep the mess under the rug. Embrace, acknowledge, and appreciate each one. It's reassuring to know there are no more breakthroughs without breakdowns. You cannot clean up a mess. It has to be reconceived, transformed, and transcended into another elevated creation. Ask yourself, where are the ways I can fully appreciate my biggest so-called mess right now? List all the messes in your life along with three ways you can appreciate each one. Understand that in the middle of the twin flame journey, it's a mess and it feels like a mess, but that's because it's all in the process of coming into that um, organic divine order that it's meant to be in. And then lastly, we have coming soon. Welcome to the next ascending age and star seed. I like the coming soon as a positive sign of timelines. It's time to awaken to your role in the next ascending age of evolutionary consciousness of humanity. The ancient prophecies predicted light eons followed by darkness. This era is part of an approximately 26,000 year cycle that's part of a cycle within greater galactic cycles. Our world is stepping out of a descending age and into an ascending silver age where we'll uncover long hidden gifts and talents. Thank you for being here in this emerging now. Thank you for showing up at the right time and thank you for who you are becoming. Ask yourself, what is my role to play in the greater story unfolding during this ascension time? Research myths and stories of the great year and see if there is a resonance you feel. And now the Starseed card is a different card that is meant to ask you to meditate and connect um, with, in this case, a starseed. The right seeds always bloom. Just as an acorn is blueprinted to grow into a mighty oak tree, you too carry the seed of the universe within you, ready to spring forward. The word entelechy means the fullest realization of a thing, and that's what you have within you. It's like your highest self guiding you to thrive in the greater mythic story unfolding. Your star seed has been planted, or more accurately, planted here on earth for a reason. Invoke your entelechy to hear more. So go into meditation, connect with your higher self um, as a star seed, and ask yourself, what have I been seeded to do? What else can I do to nourish and water my own star seed? What are the seeds I've already planted that are ready to spring forth? What is my role in the mythic story unfolding? What greater gifts can I activate now? Where is my true home? And how can I activate my cosmic DNA? Okay. And now we have two more to go. And this is the spirit guidance. How spirit is working with you, guiding you, and helping you along your way in this new year. We have the Gateway of Light Activation Oracle and the White Light Oracle. First we have, I'm going to do both of them at the same time, the Sacred Scar. I, I love this card. It's a card I want to talk about more actually in a different video. But Your inner and outer scars are marks of your soul's courage. They are signs of strength and survival, of your willingness to be alive. The Sacred Scar speaks of that which once caused pain being transformed into higher knowledge and inner power. Trauma shall be transformed through spiritual initiation, leading you from woundedness to wisdom. You have nothing to be ashamed of. You can trust your healing process and in the hidden higher purpose behind things happening as they do. You are strong and you shall flourish on all levels. And there's another important message here that I'm going to read. And actually, oh my gosh, this is perfect. So this is the year of growth, right? You don't have to enjoy the process of growth, but you can always trust it has your best interests at heart. But don't confuse negative, especially traumatic experiences as something spirit has inflicted upon you. Spirit would love your growth to happen in the most joyful and peaceful ways possible. However, spirit also knows that sometimes we have to move through intense experiences before we can gain access to the light. Those experiences teach us things only those who have truly suffered and brought their suffering to consciousness and healing can understand. The lessons include compassion, wisdom, strength, and fearlessness. 
faith in spirit and in humanity, and the recognition of the challenges of awakening while having trust in the ultimate power of the light. And honestly, like I've had this conversation numerous times recently about it, that much of that is exactly what spiritual warfare brings us through. And 50% of twin flames go through spiritual warfare as well. Understand that the reason why you're going through that, as difficult as it is, is because of the lessons in strength, fearlessness, faith in spirit, um, and having trust in the ultimate power of the light. Such a soul becomes one truly badass and divine human being, a powerful healer, and a light bearer in this world. And I freaking love that sentence. And that's what we are all going through. We are going through that as twin flames. And we are especially going through that if you're on a spiritual warfare journey also. Becoming one truly badass and divine human being, a powerful healer, and a light bearer in this world. Okay? So understand that that's what you're going through and why. Okay. Now we're going to do the gateway of the light. So next we have... The serious star blessings. Yes, proceed, be seen, push through. Where I accidentally missed it. I think I thought I did at least. Oh, maybe I didn't. There's just a lot of S cards here. Okay, so find an image of Sirius online and look for the star or look for the star in the sky. Imagine a great beam of light coming down from it and washing over your entire being. Know that the electric blue frequency will be supporting you as you move forward. The message that comes with this gateway <clears throat> is a giant yes. It brings the energy of wishing on a star and seeing that wish coming true. This is a time for you to move forward with any projects or ideas that you have felt called to carry out. There is an energy of positivity, abundance, and excitement surrounding you at this time. Whatever dreams you've been revisiting recently aren't dreams, but premonitions. Know that whatever you're connecting with on the inside is soon to be something you'll be experiencing in the physical. So think about what you desire instead of what you fear. See yourself celebrating as if your wildest dreams have come true. As you do so, you'll be creating the perfect energy for them to manifest into your world. Okay? And I'm going to take... Oh, what order did I want to go in? Mm, I kind of forgot. Okay, let's take this one. Vulva of Cedar. Your inner spiritual power can heal circumstances in your life and our world in ways greater than you realize. Journey within to gain clarity and conscious redirection of your inner energies toward what you wish to manifest. Do not try to control what is happening. Instead, work to bring positive influence to bear so that you may contribute constructively toward shaping the outcome for the greatest good. Okay. Now we have Soul Star Activation. Fulfilling Soul Contracts, Remembering Who You Are. The Soul Star Chakra is about six to 12 inches above your crown chakra, just so that you know, and directly connects to your soul wisdom. Imagine yourself in a wide open space under a night sky filled with stars. And funny how this is Horus again. Say, Horus, cosmic sky guardian, thank you for activating my soul star chakra so that I can remember on a soul level. Through your previous journeys, you have learned much about the inner workings of your soul and about the cycles of karma. Before this incarnation, you set a powerful intention to remember your divine origins. At this point, you are in a powerful space, for you are remembering who you truly are and you know that you have it within you to make a great difference in your own life, the lives of those you love, and of course the world. This remembering is in alignment with the soul contracts you made before coming to this realm. You find yourself worrying if you are making the right decisions. Know that even if you aren't conscious of it, all that you have chosen so far is in accordance with your soul's evolutionary plan. And when you draw this gateway, you are opening up on higher levels. That is one of the things that I talk about a lot. So hopefully you guys have been paying attention. Okay, now we have Pearl of Shero. Or if you just found me, then you're going to hear a lot of that. <laughs> Taking responsibility for your experiences empowers you. You are going to resolve an issue through spiritual inspiration and higher guidance. You will rise up in full connection to your spirit and access a wealth of divine treasure. 
that which has brought darkness into your world shall submit to the light and be transformed. Have courage and commitment to your awakening, for you are a precious being and can go far on the spiritual path this lifetime. Now we're going to take Memories of Atlantis. M many, if not all, I don't think it's all, but many twin flames have been in it, were, were in Atlantis. So through connecting of, to your memories in Atlantis, you are bringing about spiritual acceleration and progress for yourself as well. Visualize yourself cloaked in a beautiful deep blue energy, like Atlantic Ocean Blue, and say, Atlantean Council of Light, thank you for supporting the evolution of my soul so that I can surmount the karmic imbalances of my previous incarnations. You are being transported through a gateway to connect with ancient Atlantis. Know that by drawing this card today, you are receiving blessings from the Atlantean Council of Light who are dedicated to the evolution of the soul. You are becoming aware of your gifts, and this is an exciting time, but also a time when the energies of your ego can become loud and obnoxious. Know that this gateway is appearing to remind you to stay aligned with the highest good and rooted in the energies of devotion. Then there can be a great coming together of the human and spiritual, and you can live in a more evolved way. Now we have Aurora of Gamma. It is time to let go of what has been. You are swiftly outgrowing your past. Explore and commit to a spiritual practice that supports your personal transformation so that you can cross the threshold before you now. Embrace your freedom to be creative in your approach rather than doggedly committing yourself to your previous ideas or plans. You have the spiritual intelligence necessary to evolve. Continue your healing journey with trust that a positive outcome is imminent. Now, last card from this deck, the Central Sun. You are receiving abundance downloads, regeneration, and a promise of success, which um, we have received that promise through spirit many times, but just trust in that. Focus on that. Know that it is coming. Visualize yourself diving within until you find yourself arriving at a sun in the center of the galaxy of your being. Invite it to encode your frequency with regeneration energy. The great central sun is shining brightly in your life and upon your world. This is a time to regenerate. Tiredness and old energy are being washed away. Old skins have peeled off to reveal a sacred and more aligned you. This is an exciting time. Central sun energy is, mag is magnetic and all-powerful, opening you up to light and supporting you as you express your own light in this lifetime. New ideas, opportunities, and experiences come easily to you at this time. Like the sun kissing the perfectly ripe soil, the seeds you have planted are being encouraged to grow. Realize that in order to go beyond your horizon, it's important for you to welcome energetic exchanges. When you help others, you let yourself be helped in return. When you invest energy in projects, you let energy be invested in yourself. And then the last message from Spirit, Guidance for 2023, is Oracle of Chaldea. Continue on your healing journey with enthusiasm, but without forcing things to happen more quickly than feels natural. Sometimes the body will be ready to let go while the mind is still holding on. At other times, the mind may need to be patient as the body processes an experience. Let me also add here and understand that that's what your twin is has to go through also. Trust in your own timing and rhythm as well as your twins. There's no need to be impatient or to judge yourself or your twin. You are summoning the spiritual fortitude to tackle an issue which has previously held you back. When the time is right, the healing shall happen more easily than if you tried to push forward prematurely. Things are going to work out. Be positive. Okay. So this was long, but I hope that if you made it all the way through, you um, received some great guidance and wisdom to help you along your way on your Twin Flame journey and for 2023. Please let me know any insight um, or comments or questions, and I will continue to do, you know, collective readings. I'm trying to do them with every new moon and full moon. Although usually shorter, I will probably do these longer readings periodically. I'm also doing the collective healings now, and um, and so those are going to come up periodically as well, and just the normal. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and and that everything that I you know bring to the table 
um, through my social media is helping you in various ways for your journeys. And please feel free to reach out at any time if you have any specific questions or requests.